From MCV. So sit back and as Coach Club once said, take a ride into unknown pleasures. Enjoy. Channel 31 is staffed mainly by volunteers. We are owned and operated by the Melbourne Community Television Consortium Incorporated. The consortium comprises a number of community television groups. The groups are either special interest or geographically based. This transmission is presented by the people currently appearing on your screen. If you would like to volunteer your time to Channel 31, phone 9663 5831 during business hours. That's 9663 5831. This program is proudly sponsored by DT's Hotel, where every colour of the rainbow drinks, corner of Hyatt and Church Streets, Richmond. on Channel 31, your community station at the moment, your gay station, also seen on Optus TV, on Channel 31 if you've got that, if you're that lucky. Now we've got a sensational show this evening, we've had a sensational week just gone by, we're going to get into that a little bit later on, but now please make these sensational people on the bench welcome. Down the end we've got Peter O'Grady! Oh, That's the best welcome I've ever had. Is it really? Yeah. In my whole life. A little bit of a... <laughs> no. Next one on the list. And we've got a very special person. It's your first time on Squeal? First time I've ever been a squealer. You're, well, we make, might make you squeal beforehand because it sends some poor ex into paralysis. <laughs> so we'll try and calm it down though. Sally, welcome. Make Sally welcome. Whoa. Now Sally, you're from Joy Melbourne. What do you do there? I'm from Joy Melbourne. I'm on transmission time, 10pm till midnight Tuesdays, and I have been being the insomniac masochist doing breakfast on Monday mornings from oh 6 till 9. Oh, you're into Jesus. torture. I know, and loving it. Do you? I know. <laughs> it's good fun. It is good. And for everybody out there, what's the position on the dial? 90.7 FM is what and you can it's hear it. from Sunday to Monday or Sunday to Tuesday. We'll have a bit more on the details of that later on in the show. But it's good to be some cross media ownership. Thanks, Sally. Pack a family, eat your heart out. <laughs> yeah, I love the packers. <laughs> and next to me, we've got the lovely Troy. Hi, hey. boy. Now, you would have been having a spasmodic break this week with all that music oh, TV on. Oh, my God. That was so sensational. I wanted to be the bonnet of that car when she was dancing in that. Madonna Grammys, if you're not with it. Oh, it was just... But I want to know, how could she not win an award? Didn't she win anything? No. She doesn't need to, do you know what yeah, I mean? Like, I don't, don't be care. told you're good, should have won. No. Steely Dan <laughs> won album of the year. I mean, who really cares? That's, I mean, that's Jesus. Well, she beat Madonna, that's my point. Steely Dan. I like Steely. Anyway. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not going to speak yet. Monique, 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 welcome, oh, Monique. Yeah. Monique, I'm almost as dark as you, you should I swear. I've been rolling around in um, thousands of millions of trillions and billions of luminous spheres. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret? That. <laughs> and, and what have you been doing? Uh, no, yeah, work and taking lots of painkillers because I'm... Oh, you're like Elizabeth Taylor, you've got lots yes. of back problems. Yes, yes. Oh. So it's probably those positions you put yourself in an evening. <laughs> and on the new desk, news desk, we've got the lovely Vic Perry. Yeah, Perry. Star <laughs> of Perry. Now, 
Peter, have you got some news, darling? Uh, yeah, I just um, read about this uh, footy AIDS fears, where they're scared. somebody says that um, the HIV virus can actually survive on a bloodstained footy jumper, even though even after it's been treated with detergent. I don't. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. I mean, isn't it supposed to die after... You know, after it's been exposed for... I thought it died on contact with the air. That's what I, I say thought, human but... air for my boys, but I won't. <laughs> but guy. this guy says that only bleach can destroy it. So now, of course, you know, 40 clubs are up in arms and they're going, oh, my God, oh, my God, we can't get anything cut because they we're going to die. They could give them to, like, they could just cut that bit off, perhaps, and then <laughs> sell the jumpers, and we could, like, sniff them. <laughs> <laughs> and Chris does all have if he's watching. <laughs> Monique, sweetheart, do you have something to spat about? Well, apparently banks in America are starting to make um, credit cards with, with stars' pictures on them. So you can actually oh. walk into a bank and say you want your credit card with with Britney Spears on it or, or whoever, and they oh get a commission of, of the money spent on it. So I'm going to walk into my bank and say I want one of Peter. Me? Yeah. Oh. You're my biggest star. Oh, oh my God. That probably would stop you from using it so long. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd get a credit limit on it. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it'll probably be for $2.50. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's my bank. I'll wait for the day that it happens. Thanks for the thought. I oh, thanks, Monique. And then what we're going to do now, of course, Graeme Stevens has been so very, very busy. He's been off at the Queer Film Festival doing things. So we're going to go and have a look now. Eyes and ears to the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the famous lesbian, gay, I don't know, sick people's film festival. I don't know what they do. Now, you've flown in from another one from around the world. Some are in the States. How does this compare as an opening night party? Well, it's not opening night. It's just a bunch of fools getting pissed on Melbourne City Council money in comparison with the one you just flew in from the States. Um, it's great being back home. I tell you what, Chicago really does redefine cold. It was 18 degrees below zero while I was there. So being back here is lovely. It's been lovely. Lovely being back amongst friends and lovely being back in that festive season, season at the wonderful uh, film festival again. This is really boring. We'll move on to other people. I, you know what it's like. I mean, I really like Chicago. What about the film festival? What do you think about this in comparison to the other launches you've been through around the world? Um, I love the Queer Film Festival launches. They're fantastic. And for Melbourne, we do a great job. And um, that'll be congratulated. That's not too serious for you, is it? That's so sucky, I can't believe it. One last thing. I bet you're involved too, Mr. Coco Rama. Yes, Cockerama is here tonight, but I'm actually here to buy the poster. We like, we like this film festival because it's been taken over by lesbians. This is Squeal, we're out of here. Oh. <laughs> and that, of course, is Graham Stevens at the Queer Film Festival opening. <laughs> and now we're going up to Vic Perry at the news desk. <laughs> Thank you, Tabitha. Thank this, you. You'll be interested. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You'll be interested in this, uh, Peter. There's never been a confirmed case of HIV transmission in sport. Robin Gorner, Executive Director of the Australian Federation of AIDS Organisations, said last week in a press release in response to new guidelines being adapted by the National Rugby League for clean, cleaning blood-soaked football jerseys. The guidelines take effect this coming week after research undertaken by the St Vincent Centre for Immunology for the NRL found that HIV was still being detected on jerseys washed in detergent at high temperatures. The new guidelines will ensure that all clubs clean bloodstained jerseys with a combination of bleach and washing detergent immediately. We've always known that bleach is the most powerful cleaning agent for destroying HIV, said Afeo's Gorner. In terms of being a public health concern, one should consider recent expert medical opinion, which puts the risk of contracting HIV pl playing football at around 1 in 25 million, which is compared to 1 in 600,000, considerably less, have been struck by lightning. This isn't a health problem, it's a laundry problem, said Gorner. <laughs> There you go. Melbourne Community, well, I'll say that again. Melbourne Community Voice this week has highlighted the difficulties of Australian citizens securing residency for their same-sex partners. While such countries as the Netherlands allow same-sex marriages, these are not recognised by the Australian Immigration Department. Keith Stodden, coordinator of the Gay and Lesbian Immigration Task Force, says that while laws are currently very restrictive, this has not always been the case. In the early 1980s, there was a well-established acceptance of same-sex couples from within the Department of Immigration, with lawful codependent becoming an acceptable reason for immigration. In 1985, this acceptance became entrenched in law, with the only requirement being six months' cohabitation. However, this law was changed by the Howard government in 1996, 
couples must now prove that they have been cohabitating for 12 months, which is difficult as few visas allow visitors to remain in the country that long. On top of that, there are quotas on the number of foreign visitors allowed in, reducing the number of same-sex couples granted residency to 300 per year. Back to Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. That was great, darling heart. And now we're going to find out a little bit of news from our best and newest friend, Sally. Do indeed. And that is for Joy Melbourne listeners. If you ring Joy on 969-00907 before 5 tomorrow or fax your credit card details on 96992646, so that is if you renew or join as a member, you go into the draw for two tickets to see Kylie Minogue when she's here. Wow! And of course, oh, of course, God. But of course, more importantly, it does help Joy in that bid for the full-time licence. Yes, the applications are in, but there are now going to be public hearings from the 8th to the 18th of May, and we need to keep the membership level up as high as we can. So make sure that you join Joy, keep that membership up there, tell your friends to join, tell them to renew when their renewal notice comes out in the next few months, and you'll be helping out Joy in that bid. And unfortunately, Joy isn't back on air after tomorrow midnight, to the to late May, which is so oh you know, very obsolete. How much Trannies is renewal? Forty dollars for for a full membership and twenty five dollars concession is Joy Melbourne. Thank you very much, Sally. And now, Troy, darling, have you got some some news? Yeah, I do. Um, I got a bit of a query here. Now, I don't know if anyone else in the panel or anyone out there watched um, a girl thing on TV the other night. No, I was lesbian. Now wasn't it was that? all about Elle McPherson playing a lesbian. Or something oh, yeah, like that, that turned now, me off. No, I'm sorry, I was watching it and they did not keep their lips off each other. Who, How can we not? Because she can't act. No, no, she can't do nothing. It was like the whole episode was basically those two getting it on and like all over each other, kissing sure, and we We never. Not <laughs> we I wasn't watching it. Anyway, um, we, we never get two guys. You, as soon as you see two guys about to kiss on, on TV. Creep, they kissed, didn't they? No, this no, is it. They, they, you know, yeah, they, they, they do this and then all of a sudden it cuts mm. off or something. That's sex per game. So like with, with two women, it, it kept going on for pretty much the whole time. Of the Let's show put time. a stop to that now. <laughs> Everyone turn to the person next to you and stop pushing. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Very far, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we're going to do some footage of Graham Stevens, of course, at uh, the Queer Film Festival thing. Let me do. Jay. We're here, we're here for Squeal, and we are at the launch of the Melbourne Sicko Queer Lesbian Film Festival, and we've discovered homosexual men in suits. They must be pedophiles. Are you here for a pedophile film? No, and we're pedophile fruits, film. And suits. fruits and suits. <laughs> fruits and suits. I think they're capitalists, and come the socialist revolution, you're all going to die unless you give us $10,000. Are you prepared to give us $10,000? No, 1,000 years. 1,000. Yeah, 1,000. And that's for a bent volunteer who also sleeps with the president of Fruits in Suits. We're spreading this. This is Squeal. We're live on air spreading gossip about who's sleeping with who to get money. Thanks. <laughs> and thanks for that, Graham. That really was just truly, I mean, you think you've found your new thing, haven't you? Not being anywhere near us, but out with the people and harassing them for a change. We'll be back in the next segment. Unfortunately, this one's come to a close, so oh. what you're going to have to do is perhaps... Um, you're going to have to perhaps start touching yourself, rubbing yourself, start recording so you can enjoy this at home. <laughs> Every night, perhaps you've got friends and you just want to show them something exciting when they come over. This is what you can show them. Or you might want to start cutting up your stuff and start mixing it in that bowl and do what you do. Pull it, smoke it, bake a cake with it. Who knows? You can do so much stuff now with basil, can't you? It really is amazing. In the next segment coming up, we've got some sensational things. More of the same, actually. I hope I'm speaking clearly and no one's yelling over the top of me so that Mr. Schizophrenia doesn't get paralysed again. <laughs> we've actually got Richard Watts coming up and he'll be giving some in-depth and in-person, up close, I might even touch my titties, about the sensational happenings and goings on at the Queer Film Festival. Of course, I'm Tabitha Turlington. I'm actually too attractive. I'm going to stop now because I'm actually getting wet just thinking about myself. So you sit back, relax, enjoy. Perhaps bring up a friend and tell them to tune in because it's that exciting. Here on Channel 31. Your community television bent queer station. <laughs>
Square on Bent TV, Channel 31, your community gay television station. Of course, we're lucky to be, of course, joined now by someone who's very sensational. <laughs> this is my Kerry and Kenley pose. I'm moving now. <laughs> Over like this. Kerry Newton doesn't do that. His legs are normally uncrossed. But I'm doing Kerry and Kenley. <laughs> and I've got someone very exciting. I've got Richard Watts here, of course, from the Queer Film Festival. And you're from the Programming Committee. That's right. We're the, the kind of lucky bastards who get to see about 300 films over four months. Oh my god! Do you have Maltesers and popcorn for everyone? You wouldn't, you'd be uh, too fat. Pieces. Do you? Do you? Mm. No, we watch it. Where do you watch it? Is it at home or is there a um, cinema you go to? Uh, we meet uh, on average once a week, uh, and then as the films come in, we end up watching sort of like sometimes anything up to three to, uh, three days a week for three or four hours. Wow. Um, we meet at uh, Cinemedia in South Melbourne, who've been really supportive and helpful for the festival. All right, before we go any further, Richard, what I, what I think might be a nice idea to do would be if we cross some footage of actually the intro of the Queer Film Festival, and then we'll get a basic understanding <laughs> before we go to ask some questions. How's that sound, Lois? Let's take it away. <laughs> two versions of the trailer, the G-rated one and the R-rated one. So, so how long is the G-rated? Yeah. Oh. What does the G-one last for five seconds or something? Uh, no, it's, it's similar stuff, but it's like not quite as explicit, no bums. Do you, get, do you get some really saucy stuff sent in? Look, we, like get everything, we get everything, well, there's, we do get porn sent in sometimes. <laughs> Can so you it, send it over? <laughs> uh, uh, you wouldn't want to lend it out. You said before that you have to watch like 300 sort of um, films and that. Yep. Um, now, how many actually make the final cut to okay, there's, the festival? I think this year there's about 97 films in the festival in total. Um, 16 features, which is the most features we've ever had. And so features like a feature films, yeah, like an oh, hour and a half, your average kind of like feature length film that you'd see at a, at a multiplex or something, except the films in, in our festival aren't the kind of stuff you'll see at the multiplex. No. Uh, mm. And uh, of the features we're showing, I think 50% of the features are from countries um, sort of like such as Spain, Germany, China, um, non English speaking backgrounds. Yeah. Background. So, wow. really good, strong lineup of features. Some great documentaries, some fantastic short films. The Australian shorts are really, really strong this year. Everything from um, being gay and Aboriginal in WA to gay football players, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Richard, what percentage of the films are, are locally made, Australian made? Um, of the, the films this year, I couldn't give you a percentage. There's uh, two specific packages of Australian shorts. There's the, um, the short films that go in for the, for the, the prize of kind of best Australian short queer film. Uh, and then there's a second uh, package just called Local Lesos, which is... <laughs> local Lesos. Uh, local lesbian shorts. This one for you, man. Um, we're, we're always after a queer feature, but as yet nobody's really making um, sort of queer feature films in Australia. We're hoping that um, in a year or so, Tony Ayres is working on the uh, the feature adaptation of Holding the Man, Timothy Conroe's oh, yeah. sort of autobiography. So oh, we might be able to get that one year if it ever gets finished. But so if... if Okay. <laughs> if I decided that I wanted to go and um, make one to be entered into like next year's festival, yep. what would be the boundaries or what would I have to know before I did that? You can uh, submit anything to the festival really. It can be a short film, it can be a documentary, uh, it can be a feature length film. Um, you can go to the Queer Film website, www.queerfilmaustralia.com.au and download a, uh, a submission form. And then, yeah, just the film goes to the programming committee and we basically give it, sort of rate it from A to E. So how many did you get sent? How many films would it well, be? Well, yeah, we watched, uh, of the 300 odd films we watched in the past six months, probably a, a good 50, 60% of those would have actually been submitted to the festival. But the ones you don't like, are they really bad? Or I was just about to ask so that, yeah. No, no, no. 
there's some films that we can't afford, like uh, oh. a feature filmmaker from the US, for example, might oh, want two for grand, it. three grand oh, to screen okay. the film plus a percentage of the box office. So, so we just can't afford that because unlike the Mardi Gras Film Festival in Sydney, we don't have a huge budget. Mm. Um, so uh, there might also only be one or two prints of the film available. Uh, oh, and so okay. maybe it's showing at the London Queer Film Festival at the same time mm. ours is on, for example, so we can't get it. And sometimes, yeah, there are just films that maybe they're good, but they're just really, really American or something, and we just don't think oh, they okay. translate to yeah. a local audience. Do you have a book ticket? To go um, and they can uh, go to Hairs and Hayes Bookshop or the Sun Bookshop. Uh, they can, again, go to the website. Uh, this is the first year that we've got online booking. Yeah, where's this available from? Is Our lovely program yeah. is, um, nice. is available at, again, uh, Sun Bookshop in Yarraville, Hairs and Hyenas Bookshop in uh, Commercial Road, uh, and I think it'll be dropped off uh, a lot of the kind of cafes and distribution shops, mm -hmm. uh, distribution spots that uh, the gay press are generally available. What's your favourite film? <laughs> My favourite film? Oh, it's a hard one. Um, Come on, say 101 Red three. Boys and just get over no, it. No, <laughs> 101 Red Boys is really good. And they Red do Boys? Actually, yeah, it's a, an American <laughs> film where they just interview 101 male hustlers from Santa Monica Boulevard. But it, I think it's, it, it's a good film, but it's not my favourite. Um, uh, there's a short called, um, an Australian short called The Burning Boy from Queensland, which is just absolutely fantastic. Any uh, lesbian ones? Uh, re yeah, uh, Chutney Popcorn, which is a, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 it, it's a film made by a, um, a lesbian from Indian extraction now living in the USA. It's really, really okay. strong. Yeah. You um, have to make sure there'd be a balance of gay, lesbian, bi... Yep, yeah, because the lesbians whinge about everything. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, so <laughs> Well, that's because the Puftas are sort of like, I don't know, taking all the money and not letting the girls have a go. Yeah, and the drag queens right. are just stuck with nothing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but Sorry, babe, we're going to have a quick break. We've got to go over now as I contain myself. We're just born beautiful. I think that's why we're cursed. <laughs> to the news desk with Vic Perry. Thanks, Vic. Oh. Thank you, Tabitha. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you Tabitha. <laughs> the pink vote gets the green light. In the recent Western Australian and state elections, the Greens have been given the balance of power in the state's upper house. The Western Australian Parliament now has three openly gay or lesbian parliamentarians, one Green and two Labor MPs, more than any other state. The Greens are now eager to enact amendments to what lesbian parliamentarian Giz Watson describes as Western Australian uh, retarded homosexuality laws. Well, these laws include an age of consent for gay men that is five years higher than most other states and higher than Western Australia's age of consent for heterosexuals. The bill proposing those amendments were, was first devised in 1997. Watson believes the Labor Party is keen to change Equal Opportunity Act to end sexuality discrimination, but that may, that they, they may wait until May, which is when the Greens take the balance of power in the Upper House. Up in Queensland, a splintered Conservative vote in the recent Queensland election sees rights groups pushing for legislative change in the state. The Labor government under Premier Peter Beattie was returned with an increased majority, while the Liberal and National parties suffered their worst results ever in the state. Queensland Association for Gay and Lesbian Rights, President Colin Trail, said his organisation will join lobby groups in demanding broad-based social and legislative changes from the Labor Party. Beattie previously had only a one-seat majority, and according to Trail, this made the government afraid of pushing for gay and lesbian, transgender and bisexual legislation. We are now going to say to them that we want to see more comprehensive rights because his government is now in a position to address the issues, said Trail. Improved transgender anti-discrimination anti laws and guardianship rights between lesbian and gay partners are also on the agenda. Back to Tabitha. Thank you. Thank you, Vic. Now, of course, we're going to have a little love and look at what Graham Stevens has been out talking, chatting, and generally just harassing people <laughs> at the Queer Film Festival. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Graham. Go. Well, Dixon was very well known in this town and still is well known. Been used to run the entire arts at the Melbourne City Council. <laughs> is that why, being a lesbian as you are, that the homosexual community is in getting the money? Is that true? I don't think it's entirely true, but they certainly do. What, so you're not a lesbian? No, that I'm the reason that they got the money. Well, I don't think we're true? insider trading and we wouldn't like to spread gossip no. because there are heterosexuals but watching it's this a show. It's event that should get the money. Ben, what's deserving about sicko homosexuals hanging around dark spaces? Well, I think access to good champagne's probably one of those deserving things. Ben Ward Dixon, the surfer chick, the surfer chick from the West Coast, we thank you. We look forward to seeing you as a guest on Squeal. Are you coming on, sir? Surfer girl? They're coming on what? Trust us, we'll explain oh, it to no, her later. Yeah, She's from the country. Yeah, this is Squeal, we're out of here. Bye.
now. <laughs> oh, that was great. And it wasn't that she was from the country, it was that she was speaking to Graham, who was probably pissed at the time, which makes it all so confusing. Yeah. Now, we'll just oh, throw it on open just, the floor if you'd like to ask yeah, some I've questions. Question. Like, do you get, you know how like Corpus Christi uh, had all the people process, pro pro protesting? Yep. Do you get people coming out and doing the queer no, film festival? No, we generally don't. I mean, I'd love it. It'd be great publicity for the festival. Yeah. It's sort of like, I mean, every year we get people turning up to the festival saying, we oh, we only just found out that the festival was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll we could do something. It'd be great, sort of like some fundo Christian sort of like especially on opening night yeah like, be great. Like, let's a small fee oh, rent a crowd thing rent a crowd oh, okay. Uh, okay opening night is at the uh, the Asta Cinema over in um, Chapel Street St Kilda uh, it's a film called Psycho Beach Party it's a, kind of, <laughs> it's a send up of kind of 60s surfing movies and B movies and slasher pictures. also there's Liquid Island and Hippie Earrings and Ponytails oh there's all kinds of <laughs> and lots of fake blood as well I love all that uh, oh. how long does the festival go for 10 days in total from the 15th to the 25th of March um, one of the things I did want to um, give a real good plug to is the fact that the our youth package this year has expanded from three uh, sessions to six features wow. sorry to six sessions so it's it's just doubled in size there's um uh, other really good thing the Brandon Tina story is coming oh, back for a repeat okay. screening uh, pick, uh, if you saw the film uh, Boys Don't Cry which was a oh, yes. feature film that came out last year this is the documentary about Brandon Tina a young okay. sort of like um, uh, female to male transsexual pre-op living in the States who was uh, unfortunately raped and killed in a small country town it's a really powerful documentary and um, it's really really good so do go out and check it out yeah, there's a good package of transgender films in, in the festival this year a boy named Sue Emma or just at some some of the others it's a good it's a you must be really pleased to see the commitment and growing amount of transgender films uh, it's something that we're really proud of and really happy to support and just um, this is why it's a queer film festival not a gay and lesbian film festival trying to actually oh, acknowledge boy. the kind of depth of the community and not just films about kind of gay life on commercial road with everything from kind of like straight men who are attracted to men to sort of like to, to transsexual to transsexual to transvestite <laughs> Drag queen porn directors. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a lot of stuff. There's always room for more, but um, uh, that'll be the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th. I like that, that though, not gay, lesbian, queer, because it's so much nicer. Yeah. Now, we're going to go for a bit of a break. Robert, thank you so much. Richard. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> last time that lady was on Angela, I called her Angela, and then I called her Angelique, and then I called something else, but it's just me. Yeah, so she still loves you. As long as you don't call me something like I'll call you Richard. Long. What? Love, <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in. Thank All the best me. for everything we go, the home festival. Home. Hopefully we'll see you. And you can wait, you can grow your life. <laughs> going anywhere. After the break, of course, we'll have um, Andrew and Ross. Thank you, Sally, from MCV. Enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just want your flirtation So let's go, go where we can feel the vibration Come on now, read my lips and take dictation You just got to follow the beat and you'll find the location And a conversation to oh. Squeal on oh. Big TV, Channel 31, your community television station at the moment, <laughs> your queer one. Monique and Troy oh. and... Peter, please come down. It's a perfectly normal women's... I've got women's issues at the moment. Yeah. Women do that sort of thing. You just haven't been hanging out in Frankston. Just be careful. And how do all of our in friends in Frankston? <laughs> now, of course, we've got some sensational guests joining us now. Hi, Lulu. You're having a bit of a chuckle there, Ganel. <laughs> I like it when she smiles at me. We've got, of course, Andrew and Ross from MCV Peter. <laughs> what does MCV stand for? Oh, sorry. Now, what do you do? Andrew, there. I'm the editor, Tabitha. Okay, Ross, what do you do there? I'm the news editor, which is slightly different. Well, editor's a bit more important. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, I'm only joking. Well, you've got a pierced nipple. Yes. <laughs> Tell the one. No, no. I don't have one either. Imagine mine would burst. What does MCV stand for? It stands for Melbourne Community Voice. Because I was told it was Melbourne Cocks and Vaginas. <laughs> and, uh, you know, is that really true? But it's not. It's no. Melbourne Community Voice. No, that's right, yeah. Do you, how long has it been going for now? Um, we're up to issue number 12. No, 13. 
13 next week. So as editor, you've got to get, you've got to approve everything? Yeah, everything. Nothing gets into the paper unless it comes through me. <laughs> so if anyone's got any problems or... <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You're going to bring up Anna Harris. And baby, you're in charge of all the news. And there, that's my job. So, so world news, all news that goes in well, there? Well, mostly local stuff. Being a Melbourne community voice, we're interested in the local happenings. So, yeah. Oh, we're going to have some stuff. To well, yeah, of course. But like, uh, the first uh, like three pages are tried to devote to the stuff that's happening around town. And, and it's a constant thing. You're always working. Oh, well, you know, um, we've got to keep our ear to the ground, see what news is out there. See, how do you get it? I just want to, what do you do? Do you have reporters or do you just... Well, uh, no, we've got a lot of uh, press releases coming through yeah. and, you know, there are the good sources like uh, the Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby and people like that that keep us up to the date. So. Mm -hmm. Is it stressful make getting the paper like up to a standard that you're happy with every, was it every fortnight? It's every week. Every it's every week. week. It's out on Friday every week, yeah. So that, that must be quite stressful then having to make, you know what I mean? You know, you see it on the movies, like, oh my God, but it must be really good. <laughs> no, it's like that sometimes. It would be. Is, isn't it? Yeah. And thinking, shit, we've got to, it's not, I haven't got enough in that I'd want yeah. this week or... Yeah. Oh, you have to do filler. Because there's not enough out. bashing, Oh, no, never, never any filler, no. No, no, no filler. Stuff, yeah. <laughs> but talking of, Andrew, talking of stress, I mean, MCV, you said 13 issues and it started, of course, after the collapse of the ignominious satellite uh, media. Um, mm. How stressful was that in that first week, getting the first edition out, though? It was very stressful. We were all working from home. We, uh, we got fired on the Friday, <laughs> and then the next Friday this paper came out on the street. But were they nice about that, though? Was, was were they the firing? Yeah. No, oh, they were ghastly. Mm. Were they, oh, so they weren't, like, really, really sorry, but things collapsed and... No, they just sort of came in. Um, I mean, I wasn't there. They left my... Uh, firing or whatever you want to call it on my answering machine. Termination. No, yeah. I, they can't do and that. I came home mean. and I pressed the red line and it said, your services are no longer required as of 4pm. That's oh, nice. Oh, that was yeah. shocking. Yeah. That's just disgusting. Yeah. I, I just presume because they're being such a big corporation, I think yeah. they, they are, by the way, they, you know, to big note themselves, that they would have been a bit, probably a bit more no, business-like and polite. No, they weren't really. No. God. So how many people do you have working with you on MCV? We've got 10 full-time staff and two part-time, and I think there's about 10 contributors. Who started it? What was the guy's name? Because um, only one person started it, wasn't it? The guy who's the money man. Yeah. Um, his <laughs> name's Robert Stevenson. I, so, I, I don't know if I've met him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not good with, yeah. I'm not good with names, I'm better with faces. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have met him, no. So he's, what happened? To, oh, sorry. Okay. No, he's an entrepreneur. So he's got, I believe, like wineries, insurance companies, what have you. And he was just interested in this publication. He knew um, we were in trouble and we needed a backer. And I like getting them because I'm thinking of starting up the T. Turlington <laughs> monthly magazine and look at photos of myself. <laughs> Not the Carly book, but constant. Oh, this person will get on it, but not so that. So, um, so like, did what happened? Like, um, MSO closed, and then, I mean, it just came up the following week. How did it happen so quickly? Like, well, we were, well, we all got fired. Brother, sister, MSO got fired at the same time, and we met that weekend, and we said, "Oh no, this is ridiculous. We've got to have a paper." Yeah. So we just started working on the Sunday, and we wow. worked all week, screaming at each other, tra yeah. travelling to each other's homes, and then. Um, it's pretty paper cool. Paper came out Friday, yeah. And so it's all basically um, ex. Ex MSO right? and brothers. Although Ross is, this is his first time in gay media. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Are you enjoying it? Yeah. No, it's really good. I've only uh, next week will be my third edition, but uh, so far it's been going really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and do, is, is this the new one that's about to come out now? That's out now. You can pick that up now. How would you describe the paper? Like what? <clears throat> like it's lifestyle news. Yes, it's news. It's 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 lifestyle. It's clubbing. It's got all sorts of stuff in there. There's an article about Greg Fisher in there too. Who is? Oh, he's the used to be the executive director of uh, Satellite. Oh, but you don't want to date him, Tab. He's, he's not worth it. Now. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Probably. Oh, 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 just coming around. Oh, thanks for that, guys. <laughs> Oh, my boobies are sore today. <laughs> We're of course now going to cross over to the lovely Vic at the news desk. Thanks, Tab, for that. <laughs> Thank you. Controversy at the Grammy Awards in Los Angeles last week saw several hundred gays and lesbians rally outside the venue on the night. The rapper Eminem, known for lyrics that boast about the killing of gays and lesbians, was nominated, not gays and lesbians, gays and women, uh, was nominated for four Grammys. Gay activists protested against the nominations because they said his lyrics create a climate of violence and intolerance. In a move that was slammed by gay activists, saw openly gay singer Elton John perform a duet with Eminem. The activists were at a loss as to why he did this. Elton John was reported as saying that everyone has a right to free speech. Eminem did not end up winning any awards. Uh, Locally, sorry Pete? He got big awards. He got like oh, minor awards. He got a rap award. Yeah. 
back to local, uh, local, local news. After three successful years in Melbourne, the Y Glam, the young gay and lesbians at Moreland Theatre and Video Group, are taking their project on the road. The project is a blend of education and support for same-sex attracted youth. Their current production, Which Way Out, details the return of young lesbian to her country home after living in the city. The play, which carries a distinct message to rural audiences, will play to both health workers and the general public in Ballarat and the Grampians in late March. The Video and Theatre theater Project offers an alternative to intense counselling or discussion groups. Group coordinator Vicky de Guillermo said, we felt the creative outlet was a great way to explore, explore issues in a non-threatening manner. For gay and bisexual men under 26, uh, young, gay and work, young and gay workshops at the Victorian AIDS Council Gay Men's Health Centre have been providing a safe environment to explore a range of issues. These include coming out, sexuality, family, relationships, sexual health, self-esteem and much more. The Victorian AIDS Council Gay Men's Health Centre uh, two, also runs Buoyant. Buoyant is a regular drop-in providing social support for gay and bisexual men aged 26 and under. Buoyant is held on the second and fourth Sunday of every month from 2 to 4.30pm, and there is no need to re register, just show up. For more information about both these activities, just give Aswin a call on 9865 6700. Back to Tabitha. Oh, thank you very much, Vic, and of course, thanks, Mon, for fanning the puss. <laughs> fanning the pud, as one might say. Now, before we get too excited, we're going to cross to some footage of the sensational talents of Graham Steving, roving reporting at... Roving reporting. Where's he at? Pool party. He's at the pool party with a lovely Again. Vanessa Wagner. So let's eyes and ears. And she's actually very lovely because I did meet her. Check the monitor out. G'day, this is Squeal. We're live from the pool. And, of course, we're covering drag queens because we've been watching Queer Melbourne News all this week and they accuse us, us of covering drag queens. Um, are you a drag queen? I've been called many things in my time. Drag queen is one of them. Gender illusionist, party animal, professional show-off, man in a bikini. You take any pick. So this is the image that Squeal, Bent TV, is presenting to the suburbs, to Mr and Mrs Suburban Christian out there. Now, we're at a swim gathering. What in the fuck are you doing dressed up like this at a swim meet? Well, it goes without saying, summer in Australia, swimming a bikini. So it really is just the ultimate choice in an ensemble. Well, this is Squeal. We're out of here. Ah, yeah. oh, and that was great. There's a lovely Vanessa Wagner, and of course, she can be seen if you're ever visiting Sydney. You can pop along and see her because she's extremely funny. Was on Triple J mm. for a while, but now it's not. Now, we're going to talk about something that's very exciting. I know it touches everybody in the room. It gets me laughing when I just hear her name <laughs> Pauline Hanson! <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> now, uh, oh, just, uh, just, what's your view, Peter, on Miss Hanson? Well, you know. In your opinion. In my opinion. I, in my opinion, you know, she's, she, she is quite a scary person, but, I mean, I think it's important. It's like the whole Eminem thing. It's an M &M, uh, M &M Pauline Hanson tie-in. The only reason these people are big is because they're actually, uh, apart from their marketing, it's because they've got people, they, they're uh, expressing things that people actually feel, whether they like it or not. But say Eminem, you know? I don't think people understand. If you read, actually, his articles and things, Eminem's just, it's, he doesn't mean it. He only says it for... For like so publicity, or you yeah, see, the Queen of Hearts actually yeah. believes what she's saying. She well, actually believes it, but, but Eminem's okay. doing it. I think he's just doing it as a bit of a joke, like he's sending up the rappers, the homophobes. He's sending it all that up, but they don't. I don't think they understand that because mm. they probably haven't read anything else. Like when he says things, and like his songs contradict each other because it's all bullshit. Sorry. Back no, to no, that's all right. That's all right because I actually quite like Eminem. But um, the, yeah, Paul, I mean, Pauline Hanson is is well, she's fascinating. I think she's fascinating as well. Yeah, like, comedian Sally. I suppose my thoughts to follow on from that, I mean, there's a lot of, let's say, simplistic thinking people out there who would be gone by that, and that uh, I'm thinking of having spoken myself to the guy, Reverend Martin DePile, the lovely Presbyterian minister who allegedly stirred things up in Swan Hill. I mean, there's a sort of comparison. People believe that sort of simplistic thinking, when, particularly when these people like Pauline Hanson and the lovely Reverend put on what I call communication skills 101A, and you know, they look so, so emotional and so professional. But of course, we all know that what they're saying is allegedly crap. Problem is, the average John and Mary citizen out there wouldn't, and that's the scary thing. People can be conned. Like sheep following, yeah, they mm. need to follow mm. someone. Over um, a cliff, too. Do you have any, any, yeah, do you have any thoughts on Pauline? I think she's got scary eyes. Yeah. I, think I think she has scary <laughs> she, eyes. Her lip's scary. I think it's mm. hair lip. 
baby heart? Yeah, I want to hear her get her knives out for the community. She hasn't really done it yet. Yeah, like she's had a go at like Asians and everyone else. No, well, she has said when they asked her about her uh, Mardi Gras show, yeah, she, she would not she's promote something. Back. She's holding back. Normal. I want to hear it go. That'd be good. Troy? I just think she's good for a laugh. I she, mean, uh, well, see, the whole thing, I don't think she's a comedian. At all. I don't think she's ever really going to get that far because she's she's a laugh. Like, <laughs> You know, you can't put him on. Well, I put her down my top last week. You did. This is true. Yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. Yeah, I think that the danger is that, uh, as someone mentioned, a lot of people out there are only thinking what she's saying, but that's, uh, there are a lot of people out there who aren't actually thinking anything, don't have any opinion, so they hear the stuff that she says and believe it. So mm. there are a lot of people who are vulnerable and impressionable and but. will take on what she says without really thinking about it, and that's the problem. Yeah, but I still, I'm very much against censor censorship. But, mm. I mean, you know, it's mm. like where the... Oh, Thanks you've got to wind up. Yeah, anyway. Great. And, of course, <laughs> I just think she's really yeah. funny. I mean, of course, I think she's a bit mental. But funny at the same <laughs> time, <laughs> the way she speaks. We'll be back after the break. Yes. Thank you very much, Andrew. Thank you very much, Ross MCB. Check it out. It's out every Friday in your local club, pub or cafe. Check it out. You'll find it. We'll be back after the break with some more fodder. <laughs> and fun. <laughs> and me. <laughs> I don't like it. No, I don't. Never did. I don't like it. I don't like anything, anything, anything. I don't like it. No, 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 I don't. I don't care. I don't like it. I don't like anything, 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 anything. No, the whole thing. Oh, look at that.